Are you tired of mediocre audio ruining your projects? Listen up all content creators, filmmakers, and audio enthusiasts. The secret to exceptional audio quality that can make all the difference in your finishing process is choosing the right headphones. So let's elevate your audio experience with the right headphone. As a video pro, headphones are something that I didn't want to spend too much time thinking about. Specifically, the difference between professional headphones and consumer ones. Now you might be thinking as I did, who cares? A good pair of headphones is perfect enough. They all sound the same and they all sound great. But trust me, there is a world of difference between these two types of headphones especially when it comes to mixing sound effects, dialogue, and music. Those fancy consumer headphones are probably making your content sound really bad, and your audience is suffering because of it. One of the most important things about your videos is good audio. And if you spend all this time buying the right microphones and buying all the plugins to get all your mixes right, but if you're mixing with the wrong equipment, your audio could sound too flat or too bassy and both can turn off viewers from an enjoyable experience. There is a reason that professionals choose carefully which pair of headphones they use to mix with. You need something that is durable, that lets you hear every detail, not too booming and not too high. That's why owning a good pair of stereo headphones is generally a smart move. Now to be clear, studio headphones aren't for everyone, but there are still a few reasons why you should consider getting some. Even if you're not a creative type involved in podcasting, video, or sound creation. Although the term studio has been co-opted and used as a marketing term by some consumer audio brands, I'm looking at you, Apple, actual studio headphones are mostly intended as a tool to use in the recording studio or where audio is created and worked with. In an ideal world, we will all have high-end studio monitors with fantastic sound treatment in our mixing space. I don't know about you, but that's not me. This is a small spare bedroom in my house that I do all my work out of. And I mainly focus on visuals, so I really don't need anything fancy audio-wise, nor does it make sense for my setup. Personally, I just have a HomePod mini to listen to music occasionally. Also, I feel that if I did have speakers in here, it would just drive my family crazy if they had to listen to me edit the same piece over and over again as one does while editing, or if editing or mixing late at night. So good headphones were the way to go for me. Here's the thing though, you may have an expensive pair of headphones, but it actually may be hurting your audio finishing. Headphones like the AirPods Max are designed to sweeten sound, to make music seem to pop, feel more bassier, fuller, the headphones are trying to make up for the fact that the speakers inside them are smaller. And I can listen to music on these all day long. They sound great, they have noise cancelling and transparency modes, but that music also sounds good on home speakers, or on the car stereo, or even tiny earbuds. No matter where you listen to it, it feels and sounds good. And there's a reason for that. When mixing content, you want to be able to move back and forth between your headphones and your studio speakers without any big surprises your mix should translate well between all of them. So how do you achieve that? Well, professional music, movies, and broadcasts are mixed to be enjoyed on consumer equipment, unless you're Christopher Nolan. From the high-end devices to iPhone speakers. That is great news for consumer headphones. Grab your lightweight headphones and simply enjoy it. And if you're finishing your content on those consumer headphones, then you're starting on the wrong end of the mix. And with all that sweetening, it'll cause you to overcompensate one way or the other. If you have nice headphones, you'll reduce the bass and crank up the highs in your mix, and then the mix will sound really flat on smaller speakers, but it'll sound okay on really nice headphones. Or vice versa. If you're mixing with small earbuds or laptop speakers, you'll increase the bass too much and decrease the highs of your mix, and this will sound very muddy overall on other speakers. This is where professional headphones are designed to produce that flat frequency response meaning that the audio will sound more accurate and true to life. That's why mixing on neutral headphones is the key to find the right balance no matter where your audience is enjoying your content. iPhones, laptops, TVs, whatever. Studio headphones do not need to be the most expensive, but they are known for their durability first and foremost. They are built to use and use a lot, to handle being used for long periods of time, pulled on and off many times during a session, and often thrown around with other recording gear. But because of this, they typically aren't the prettiest things. But if it gets a job done, most people don't care what their equipment looks like. They are literally function over form. 
That's why you don't see most people wearing studio headphones around town just enjoying music. And I find it interesting that the pro audio world is still full of products designed decades ago. Like the Sony MDRs, which has a well-known accepted sound. This pair of headphones doesn't necessarily sound nice or pleasant because that's not its job. While it's true that some of the best reference headphones can get crazy expensive, there are plenty of great options that get the job done without costing serious money. Some of the most commonly used headphones in the audio industry can cost half as much as Beats Studio headphones. Both Sony MDR7506 and the Audio-Technica ATH M40X are prime examples of affordable options that have plenty of professional users. For me, the pair I use are Bayer Dynamics DT77 Pro, the 32 ohm version. And I'll get into what that means in a minute. I can wear these suckers for long stretches of time without my ears getting too hot. Whereas my Danone headphones, while making music sound awesome, I can't wear these for more than 30 minutes at a time. My ears get way too hot and it becomes very uncomfortable. The 77s have been banged around, dropped, stuffed in gear bags, and are still working great. And I'm not really worried about scratching them as long as they sound good. And they're relatively inexpensive to replace if they do break. And just know that there are different variants of the Bayer Dynamics, and it all comes down to the type of DAC or the digital audio converter that you have. Essentially your audio input device. And if you're actually able to send power to the headphones. And if in doubt, just get the 32 ohm version, which can be plugged directly into laptop and computer headphone jacks. Otherwise the other headphone variants will sound too quiet and they'll feel like they are broken. So make sure you get the correct ones for your setup. Now there's nothing wrong with the AirPods Max or other consumer headphones. They are meant to sound great consuming content like music and videos. And I have used them when editing the bulk of my content. I just wouldn't use them for the detailed mastering to finish the mix. Just as much as I wouldn't use a regular TV to do my detailed final pass of color grading. What if you're not a professional musician or audio engineer? Are studio headphones still for you? Listen, I'm definitely not a professional audio engineer. I would say absolutely, studio headphones can be for anyone. Try them out. Who cares who they're made for as long as you like how they make your audio sound. And as a bonus, you get the benefits of a product that was engineered for professional use. So now that you've made the choice to have studio headphones, you need to start mixing your content correctly. And in this video, I go over how to balance your music so that your dialogue punches through the mix. Also, I live stream on my second channel where I deep dive on the creative process as well as freelance finance. So make sure you check that out. As always, thanks for watching.